Morning, everyone. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. I know it's evening in the US. I've just woken up. As you can see, I'm still in my PJs and have no makeup on. Um, I thought I'd go live just to catch some people who've just got up in Australia, the middle of the day people in other places, the nighttime people in the US, just to kind of establish when I should be going live randomly because this is the first couple of days I've been going live. My first live was yesterday and I had great fun chatting to everybody about manifestation. So if you are curious about manifesting, you have questions about it, you're not sure about it, you're trying things and it's not working, please ask me anything. Oh, I've lost connection. That's weird. Why do I keep losing connection? So um, I'm here with my coffee. It's morning time here in Australia. Hi, hi, hi guys. Hi, Brent. So please ask me any manifestation questions you might have. Now, yesterday people were asking me about manifesting their ex back, um, manifesting a new house, um, whether they can manifest winning the lottery, etc., etc. Now, what I will teach you, or what I've learned from my experience and my many, many years of trying to figure this shit out, is very different from probably what you've been learning unless you've discovered yourself, Neville Goddard, Law of Assumption, Joseph Murphy, Florence Scoville Shin, the people who talk about your subconscious mind manifesting, not the universe, because the universe don't do shit for you. So if you've come from a law of attraction background, which obviously so many people on here have because there's so many people on here talking about letting go and fucking the universe and allowing and all this bullshit. If you've, um, huh? Oh, you're lesbian too. I'm not lesbian. Um, but nothing, not there's anything wrong with that. Um, so if, um, you are concerned about like manifesting, you've tried those techniques and they're not working and you have any questions as to what it is that you're doing wrong, not that you're doing anything wrong, but when you discover that it's just your subconscious thoughts and all you need to do is change those, it's scarily easy. Because, guys, all they're trying to do with all these techniques they're teaching you about 369 and affirmations is trying to rejig your subconscious mind with new thoughts because your old dominant thoughts is what's created your reality thus far. So your old shitty negative thoughts created what's in front of you right now and all you need to do to change what's in front of you right now is to change your thoughts. Okay, any questions, guys? So have you got any manifestation questions? What about the people who say manifest 16 seconds? Oh, my God, the 16, 17 seconds thing. I don't know where the hell that came from. I think it's Abraham Hicks. And look, you know, she seems like a nice enough lady, but she talks in such gobbledygook confusion that I swear to you, if you watch her lectures online, not only is she, not only is she condescending to her audience, but people seem utterly confused. And they are confused because she's talking in like, manifestation speak that no one understands she talks about vortex and and um things igniting and the universe igniting and all this shit it doesn't make any sense what she says half the time and that's what the secret's based on you realize the secret was based on abraham hicks's teaching but because she was so fucking weird talking to abraham and channeling abraham they didn't put her in the book in the movie because they thought people would be freaked um so she does talk a lot of sense about changing your thoughts but then when she starts talking about change your thoughts and then put it out in the universe change your thoughts for only 17 seconds that doesn't make any sense to me okay so the 17 16 second thing is this she's saying that if you concentrate on something for 17 seconds it will ignite the universe well no no one's igniting any universe all you're doing is concentrating and focusing and focus is the key to manifestation on a new thought for long enough now, you can sit there for 17 seconds, that's great, but you've got to do it over and over and over and over and over again. You can't just do it once for 17 seconds. Such and such and I are happily married. Okay, we're happily married. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you've got to reignite your brain, not the universe. You've got to put that thought in your brain enough. If you think you're not married and you're looking at the 3D and you're not married, you've got to trick your brain into thinking you are. So the 17 seconds thing, you've got to do the 17 seconds each time about 100 times a day for it to actually sink in. What about vision boards? Oh, okay, another thing. So I tried vision boards. Honestly, I put a vision board back in England I probably made years ago. And I know 
people who've, who've manifested things off their vision board. My old best friend that, um, manifested her wedding dress. I reminded her a couple of weeks ago. She said, oh, I don't believe in manifestation. I said, your wedding dress is on your vision board, your exact wedding dress. And she was like, oh, yeah, it is too. And look, all it is is you trying to put together what you want your life to be. And that's great. But the vision that you're trying to create needs to actually be in your subconscious, not on the board. So if you create the board, great. But you've actually got to stare at it enough. Imagine I'm living in that house. I have that dress on, that wedding dress. This is my new partner. Like you've got to impress your mind. The board doesn't do anything. The people that it works for, they've really impressed their subconscious mind. They've gone into their imagination. They've looked at the picture of the dream house and then they've imagined themselves living there. My friend probably imagined herself enough times in that wedding dress that she went and found it in a shop and didn't, and forgot all about the fact that that was the dress she'd chosen in her mind and cut out from a magazine and then she was wearing it at a wedding, right? The board itself doesn't work. It's your thoughts about what's on it. It's impressing your subconscious mind with the new images that are on there. I personally, I just do it with your head because with a vision board, you've got to find the magazine pictures. You've got to find the pictures on the internet if you're doing a digital one. Well, can't you just imagine what your house would look like? I think that's a lot easier. I love your videos. Oh, thank you, darling. Thanks, Portia. Um, can I manifest a change in my appearance, for example, bigger lips? Absolutely. Okay, so I, it's not wavy now because I've brushed it out, but I've manifested having wavy hair recently because my hair's never been wavy. I've also manifested having youthful skin, even though I'm getting pimples. Okay, so I decided, like, look at, um, Jennifer Lopez, one of her affirmations, she's really into affirmations, J-Lo, and one of hers is, I'm youthful and timeless at every age. I'm youthful and timeless at every age. The woman is 50. She looks 35. Is she 50? Yeah. And don't tell me it's the olive oil shit she's putting on her skin. It's her mind, okay? And probably because she doesn't drink and she wears lots of sunscreen, her belief is not going in the sun keeps me youthful. Not drinking keeps me youthful. It's the belief in what she's doing that's causing it. Because lots of people can drink and go in the sun still useful, although I don't recommend you go in the sun if you want to keep useful. But you know what I mean? It's her belief in it that's doing it, and her affirmations work. I didn't know that about J-Lo. Yeah, she's got an excellent interview with Oprah. She's sitting in a yellow outfit, really bright yellow, and she talks about how um, her, you, you thought, you said, she says, your thoughts create your reality. And she realized that was the reason why she split up with... Um, what was his name, the one she had the children with, because she didn't love herself enough and she had no self-love at that time and she allowed her thinking to almost break them up and um, that she had to really learn self-concept and build her self-concept up. Because a lot of famous people, if you watch them, they might believe they're famous and they have these affirmations in their mind constantly, their thoughts, which are affirmations, um, everyone loves me, but they don't love themselves. So it's really interesting. That's why you get a lot of people who have killed themselves, but they're famous. So they have the belief, the subconscious thinking dominantly that, yeah, I'm, I'm talented. Everyone loves me. I'm famous. But then they're like, I'm a piece of shit, like Amy Winehouse. Um, do we do affirmations just once daily or over and over and over daily? Honestly, guys, everyone's got different opinions on this, but I would say this. How dominant is your negative thinking? If you're thinking negative shit all day, you literally need to be replacing your negative thoughts with your affirmations, not just on a schedule getting up in the morning going, such and such and I are happily married, John and I are happily married, John and I are happily married, I'm a master manifester, blah, blah, blah. And then you just go about your day thinking all the shit you normally think and then you go to bed at night, John and I are happily married, I'm a master, master manifester. Because all through the day, you've still been thinking your shitty thoughts. So what you need to do is yes, have a schedule of manifesting, sure, during the day, like do it on the hour if you want or whatever. But if during the day your inner conversations, this is what Neville Goddard, Goddard calls your crappy thinking during the day, what are your inner conversations? Really assess that. Write it down if you need to. Take a book and write down the shit you've thought that day and you'll shock yourself at the shit you say to yourself. That's when you need to be doing your affirmations. So if you're saying in the morning, John and I are happily married, John and I are happily married, and then during the day, you're thinking, why isn't he texting me? I miss him so much. That's when you need to be saying, John and I, no, 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 John and I are happily married. In my head, we're happily married. We're together in my head. You use those affirmations and try and remember a few core ones so you can just use them off the top of your head. That's the key because it's changing your inner conversations that will change your reality.
Okay, you've got to do it constantly because you've got to think, how many years did it take for this subconscious shit to get in? You need to really drum that shit in there. Yes, they manifest being famous but not true self-love. Yeah, oh, look how many people are famous and kill themselves. It's astounding because the fame doesn't give them the, the love they're craving. Like, look at Marilyn Monroe, how miserable she was. She was so beautifully vulnerable. That's why people loved her. She affirmed that she was beautiful. She affirmed that people loved her. She used to do that. But she was so felt so unlovable because her mother had abandoned her and she was fostered. And she just never, ever, ever got over that. And those thoughts. And then she would try and have her own children and miscarry. And every time she did that, she'd be more depressed and more depressed. And her depression just overwhelmed her because it didn't matter about the fame. The things she thought would make her happy didn't make her happy. She thought that being famous would bring her this love that she craved and it never did. So we basically just keep imagining and affirming until it shows up, I'm getting impatient. Okay, I can understand impatience, but... If you can really live in your, I'm going to say fantasy mind, but it's really not fantasy, but if you can live in the end in your mind, guys, you won't feel as impatient, trust me. Because you'll be thinking, I'm working on myself, I'm building myself up. So say you've split up with someone, and this has happened to me, you've got to be spending that entire time thinking, well, it doesn't matter when they come back, because when they come back, I want to keep them. I don't want them just to come back and then lose them again, because I've still got all this shitty shit inside of me that caused the breakup in the first place. Do you guys understand that? So your shitty thinking, your negative thoughts about yourself, I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, he's going to leave me, I'm not pretty enough, I'm too fat, maybe he's talking to other girls, relationships never work out for me. Those thoughts will still be running when you get back together. And if you don't get rid of them, they'll go away again. So use this time, don't be impatient, use this time to really work on your self-concept, change yourself, put yourself way up on the pedestal. So when they come back, you're up here, feeling amazing about yourself and you'll never split up again okay how do we work on ourselves while they're on their way okay so guys i'm going to do a course on self-concept because this is the most important thing of all neville i can't find my book neville talks about there is no one to change but self you can't look in the mirror when you're looking in the mirror and you try and change your face you don't draw lipstick on the mirror do you you draw the lipstick on you and it reflects in the mirror that's what manifestation is you're drawing lipstick on yourself in your mind and it reflects on the person. You're not changing the person. So in the meantime, you've got to do these things. You've got to affirm for yourself. Create affirmations against your own negative thoughts. Go and do an assessment, a critical assessment, uncritical assessment of self, as Neville says. Don't beat yourself up for the shitty thoughts you think. Don't sit there and think, God, why have I been thinking... You know, I, I'm not good enough all my life. What an idiot. Don't beat yourself up. Just assess it. What do I think? I'm not good enough. I'm too fat. When my skin's better, I'll get a boyfriend. When I finish uni and I'm successful, then people will love me. Whatever your thoughts are, write them down. Then on the other side, write the opposite. I am successful. I have the most amazing career. I am perfect just the way I am. And everyone loves me just the way I am. My body is perfection and always has been. My body is beautiful. I was wonderfully made. I am more than good enough. I am fucking perfection. I am the queen on a throne and everyone obeys me. Okay? Start doing those kind of affirmations for yourself and do them every fucking day. And I mean every day, all fucking day, if your self-concept is in the toilet. Do it in the car. Rampage. I rampage while I'm driving. I am the shit. I'm the baddest bitch. There's no girl in the whole world like me. You lose me, you lose. Okay? I am too important to lose. Okay? I say stuff like that to put, build myself up because my self-concept was so in the toilet that I needed to do that. Okay? And then people will start treating you differently. You watch. People just in your outside world will start treating you differently. Your work colleagues, your friends. Okay? You'll start walking in a room, people will notice you. Men will start coming up to you that are just random and fucking weird. I've got guys, like fucking neighbours who pull up their cars and jump out, hi! And I'm like, ah, I can calm down. I've made my self-concept a little bit too much. Okay, so sometimes you've got to assess what you're saying. Like, um, everyone loves me. We don't want everyone to love you. Okay, you've got to be careful sometimes. I'm going to get some fucking stalkers. Um, can we stop talking to an ex for a bit while I'm here? Can we stop talking about exes for a bit while I'm here? I have no interest. What do you mean, darling? You mean stop talking to them? Like you're together and you want to stop talking to them to work on yourself? Or you mean 
You've lost interest in them. Just, just rewrite that one, darling. My friends think I'm crazy when I tell them your thoughts create reality. Well, don't tell them. <laughs> the amount of times I talk about manifestation with people and they just think I'm a nut. Like if I told them how I created, got my car, they go, oh, laws. And I go, guys, there weren't any white MGs in WA. I created one. Like, shut up. But sometimes people think you're crazy and they won't ever realize it. Some people are asleep. Leave them asleep. Yes, I just did that while driving home right now. Yes, do. Okay, rampage. Because in your car, no one can fucking hear you. They think you're talking on speakerphone. They don't know. Even when I'm walking in the park, I rampage. Because people think you're talking on the phone. If you have your earphones in, people think you're on the phone. I talk to myself all the fucking time. Or do it in your mind. But I can't help myself. I, I do talk aloud a lot. She's talking about self-concept. Yes, I am talking about self-concept. Jump in here if you want to ask any questions about it. I thought you were talking about trying to manifest getting back with your ex and I have absolutely no interest in that I'm the one who manifested moving four hours away. Oh, you tried to get four hours away from the person. Oh, okay. So, good. Okay, if you want to get away from them and you manifested the four hours away, I saw your comment about four hours away. Good for you. So, don't worry about it. You've got four hours away from them, forget about them. Just affirm that they go and get another life and they find someone else. Oh, to them. You manifested getting... I'm trying... I'm confused. I thought you were talking about trying to manifest X back with your... Getting back with X and I have absolutely no interest in that. I'm the one who manifested moving four hours away, not from them, nothing about my ex. Oh, right. Okay. How can I react when someone tells me he won't come back because it's taking a long time and it's not... How can I react when someone tells me he won't come back? Okay. So when you're 3D reality, you get hit with something you don't like to hear. Okay, guys? It's just your old thoughts. They are literally reflecting your old thoughts. You will have had... A thought about he's not going to come back and then he says I'm not coming back that's what law of assumption is your assumptions out picture into reality honestly like my SP has said so much shit to me that I've thought about his ex-wife and his life and as he says it I think I get really hurt and then I go He's saying that because I thought it. So when we first got together, he'd be like, I didn't want to get married again. And I'd think, oh, that's a horrible thing. I don't want to hear that. But then I realized I was thinking that men who are getting divorced don't want to get married again. He's just reflecting your thoughts. So don't get hurt by it. Just know, okay, was I thinking that? Yeah, I was. So stop thinking that shit. Can I manifest moving house even though it's hard? Well, stop thinking it's hard. Start thinking everything is easy, guys. Don't look at anything as more hard than something else. Don't think getting a free cup of coffee is easier than moving house. It's not. It's not. Just start saying, I love my new house. I love my new house. God, moving to that house was so easy. Getting that house was so fucking easy. I am a master at manifesting this shit. I'm so happy all my manifestations are coming into reality. I'm not thinking I'm poor anymore. Instead, I'm thinking I have everything and it's coming true. Exactly. Think about the people who lose money and then gain it again and lose money and gain it again. They're not worried. They go, oh, yeah, money comes to me easily. The amount of entrepreneurs, look at Donald Trump, the amount of times he's been bankrupt, he didn't give a shit. He was just like, I'll get more money, okay? You've got to have that mindset of always having money, that money is always there for you and always come back, okay? Because otherwise that's when people win the lottery and they lose all the money. That's why like 99% of people who win lotto within a year, all their money's gone because it's what they're thinking about money. See if I've missed any questions. Mm. She means she doesn't want to talk about ex-partners. Oh, I've literally had an ex and a random guy come up to me, so I guess I've done a good job on self-love. Yes. So, guys, if people in your reality start reflecting what you're thinking about yourself, if random men and women start coming up to you, like when my self-concept was really good, I used to have girls cracking onto me, and I'm not a lesbian, Okay. And I remember one night going to this bar and I don't know what the fuck was going on, but every gay girl in the bar. And I was like, it's happening in here. I mean, I was dressed like Wonder Woman, so maybe that was why. But you know what I mean? Like, your subconscious will work on everyone, even if you're not that orientated sexually, okay? So your subconscious works on everything and everyone. It even works on animals, okay? If you feel lovable, animals will love you. Um... How did you manifest your car? How did it come to you? I literally drove my shitty car, imagining that my shitty car was my new car. So I would drive it going like this. 
I love my new car. I love my new car. It was so easy for me to get. And I was saying it's so white and cool and it's a lovely little hatchback and it's so technological and I had hot air coming through the window because I had no air conditioning. And I was saying to my dog, isn't it lovely and cool in here? And the poor dog was like passed out on the seat because it was 45 degrees outside and boiling hot air coming in. Okay, and I was imagining my dashboard was this new dashboard and my car on the outside was white, even though my car was green. And I just kept saying it and saying it while I searched for a car. So you've got to go, still got to go and search for the car. I mean, someone could have maybe... A car could have miraculously appeared outside my house, but I wasn't willing to wait that long. I had to go and search for the car. But while I was searching for cars and I was being told, no, you can't get credit. No, we don't have something that price. No, there's no automatic cars in your range. Da, 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 da. I was still saying, I love my new car. And eventually, I got the car and I got a brand new car, even though I actually was looking for a secondhand one. So Manifestation's Perfect, it literally outpictured what I was imagining, which was new. I kept saying, fancy new car and it's a fancy fucking new car and I've never had a new car in my life and my dad even paid the repayments so honestly I got a new car for the price of a second hand one just by imagining my car was a new car and I didn't listen to the no's that people were telling me no you can't get credit I was thinking no fuck I love my new car I love my new car how long do your manifestations normally take to manifest two to three weeks or months oh look it depends guys some things take fucking forever You've just got to trust that they're coming, that they're already here, sorry, that they're already here. You've got to trust that they're already here in your mind and that it's possible that it's all going to manifest. Don't You don't have to believe everything. I know people think, oh, you have to believe it. Just believe it's possible if that's too hard to believe it's already here. Just believe it's possible. And that it's it, in their own appointed hour they turn up. Some people call that divine timing. I believe I'm divine, so I'm deciding the timing. But... Um, once you're really, the time it takes is how long it takes you to convince yourself that it's here. That's my answer. Can I manifest that I manifest him in two weeks? Go on then. Focus. Really fucking focus on this. Focus on yourself. Do nothing but self-concept work for the next two weeks and see what happens. Do you think that when people win the lottery, they manifest winning it? Oh, a lot of people do. A lot of people just believe they're lucky and they always win the lotto and they always win raffles. You know those people who like, they're like, God, you're so lucky, you always win shit? They believe they will win it. They will win it. Therefore, they win. So they can go to a club and there's like a raffle and they'll always win the raffle. And people are like, oh, I hate having you on my table. You always win. It's because they think they're a winner. Same in the casino. Those people always win at the casino. Um, do you think that we, um, I'm trying that now? What are you trying that what are you trying now? Thank you. Because of you, I'm feeling positive and good. Oh good. I listened to all your videos on reply. Oh wonderful. On replay. I'm so glad. Because guys, honestly, this whole shit about needing to feel positive to manifest, it's really debilitating because it makes you feel like when you're depressed or anxious that you can't do it. Just trust me that you're always manifesting everything. So you don't have to feel positive. All you have to do is think new positive thoughts about the shitty negative stuff you've been thinking. Because I know what this is like when you're not feeling positive and you're not feeling good. It's hard because you're trying so hard to feel positive and you can't because you feel depressed. So all you need to do is think new thoughts. And if I, when I went through therapy, if, if they taught me that, that these are the thoughts you constantly have. Now let's have affirmations for the new ones. All they taught me was, here are the thoughts you normally have. I was like, great, what do I do about it? Okay, they kind of taught me a bit of how to undo it, but not really. They kind of told me to tell my mind off, like, shut up, shut up negative thinking, but didn't, they didn't give me enough tools to replace the old thoughts, okay? And I went through like six months of therapy and it still didn't teach me that. Affirmations are really powerful, guys. If you focus and you do them enough, you do them every day. If you're trying to manifest your ex or you're trying to change your self-concept and self-concept is getting back your ex because you're changing you, Really focus on it, guys. Make this a priority. Affirm every day. Every time you've got a spare moment, be it doing your affirmations in your head because you're trying to change that old thinking. So no, you don't have to be positive. But if this, and it, eventually doing the affirmations will make you feel good. So I'm really glad you're watching this because it hopefully it's making you feel like I can do this because I'm manifesting every day, even the shitty shit. So yes, feel good and positive about the fact that you can manifest because you fucking can because you do it every day. Do you believe in the idea that's not for you? No, it's not your person. No, 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 I don't. This is the whole I know the whole rule is everyone is you pushed out. Why aren't some people why are some people just mean? Okay. So you okay, so everyone is you pushed out is law of assumption. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's an expression called everyone is you pushed out. 
Now, it doesn't mean, so why are people just mean? Do you, read your comment again. Why are some people mean? Your assumption is some people are mean. Therefore, in your reality, some people are mean. That's everyone as you pushed out. Your assumptions manifest. So you're assuming some people are mean, and therefore, in your reality, people turn up as mean. In my reality, I won't have that assumption so people won't turn up being mean to me. See what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you're mean. Some people think everyone as you push out is a mirror. It's not a mirror. It's not reflecting how you... It doesn't mean if they're mean, you, you're mean. It means you think they're mean. If someone's an asshole to you, you probably thought they were an asshole before they were doing it. Or you thought you weren't good enough, so they started treating you like shit. Should I keep pictures around? First thing I did was put everything away. You mean of your ex or you mean like vision boards? Just to clarify that one, darling. Do I have to make a session of manifestation or just affirming all day in my head? Look, do a session if you want, but if you're affirming, if you're thinking all day in your head the opposite of what you're affirming, then do think it all day. That's what I'm saying about inner conversations. You really have to change them. Oh, wow, there's 14 people here. Okay, this is a good time for me to go live then on a Saturday because there's more people than I had yesterday. 15 people. Hi, guys. Hi. So ask me any of your manifestation questions. Um... Great videos. I'm a fan. Oh, thank you, darling. Can I manifest something to happen for my children? Oh, absolutely. Or, oh, I've accidentally almost blocked you. Um, can I manifest something to happen for my children? Yes. And you can also teach them to manifest because children are master manifestors. They already do it all day long. You think about a child when you say, they say, can I have that sweet? And you say, no. And they say, can I have it? And they keep pushing it. But can I have it? And they push it and push it. In their head, they're having it. They don't give a shit what you say. Okay. Think about what they do in the playground. They imagine they're Iron Man. In their head, they're Iron Man or Superman or a fairy or a princess. They think they are. You can't tell them they're not. They think they're, what's the name from Frozen with the blue dress? They think they're Elsa. They think they are. Teach your children to do it. If they want something, teach them to imagine it. And they will imagine it quicker than you because they have no shitty thoughts that got put in there for years and years. They've got only a few shitty thoughts. Okay, or you can imagine it for them. So you can say, uh, you can imagine things in their hands, like something they get given, or um, that you can imagine my children are so successful. I have the most successful children. I have the happiest and most, um, you know, blissfully happy children. You can imagine whatever for them by affirming for them. I affirm for people all the time. I imagine shit for people all the time. What do you think about subliminals? I don't understand them, honestly, because I can't hear anything. I'm like, well, what is the thought you're sending me? So you're sending me things like saying, the devil is alive, um, go and cause a terrorist incident. How do you know what these people are saying in these things? You didn't create it. I wouldn't trust it. Some people say that they've found subliminals and it's given them nightmares and then they found out later that the person's put in some really negative shit in there. So I'm... Personally, create your own little mind takes. So I've got a lot of um, affirmation um, videos coming up, guys, with beautiful, soothing music and me repeating just three affirmations. Just And because um, TikTok loops, just go to bed at night with whatever one you've chosen. Say it's a self-concept one about I am a queen, I am treated like a queen, I'm up on my throne. That's a good self-concept one that I did recently. It's a, I'm in a yellow top. Just watch that one. Put it on loop and go to sleep with that because that's a nice one. Okay, and it's soothing. And you can hear what I'm saying. Subliminals, I don't know what the fuck they're saying. So I wouldn't want to go to sleep with that because what if they're saying go out and kill people? <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. Um, should I keep pictures around? First thing I did was put everything away. Oh, of your ex? Oh, well, look, if that makes you feel sad and upsets you and throws you off, what's in your mind, then, yeah, get rid of them. But I, you know, when my SP and I split up, I still looked at his Facebook and everything it it, you know, like, I imagine we were together still. But if it makes you feel like you're not together and you look at the pictures longingly and think, oh, God, if only we were together. If you can look at the pictures and go, look at our beautiful relationship. Aren't we so happy? We've always been perfect together. We've always had the most perfect relationship. Use those for your affirmations. Look at us. Aren't we so great together? We are so good together. Use it or put it away. If it triggers you, put it away. People say that you demand to the universe, but you do believe... People say that you demand to the universe, but do you believe in the universe? No, I don't believe in the fucking universe, guys. The universe is just air. You're not putting anything out there and then something sending it back to you. 
It's just you doing it. You've really got to get rid of this universe shit because it's not helping you and it's making you feel very powerless. Because if you let something go, like they say, letting go, allow, okay, and you're just waiting and waiting for this thing to make a decision for you or this or something better will turn up, well, I don't want something better. I want the thing I want. If I'm in love with someone, I want them back. I don't want some new fucking person. Should I just go down? Should I just go on the down or from my friend group for a bit. What do you mean, darling? Write that one again. Me and my SP are in separation right now, trusting the universe. No, don't trust the universe. Trust yourself. Live in the end and up in your mind that you're going to create this shit, okay? Yes, trust that it's going to come to you in its own appointed hour, in its own time, but don't think that the universe is doing this for you guys. Let me just explain this. Space, air, can't do anything for you, but people do. So what Neville describes is people will move, whether it takes a 1,000 people, one person, or 10,000 people. They will move to make your assumption true. So if you assume that you and your ex are back together, that you've always been together, that you're in the most loving, happy relationship, people will move. There's stories of like someone getting arrested and they sit in a jail cell and the person they sit in the jail cell with, this is their ex-boyfriend, is sitting in a jail cell and the person they're sitting with starts talking to them about life and then says, well, that girl sounded amazing. Why aren't you with her? What are you, an idiot? And then the next minute he gets out of the jail cell and the first person he rings for his phone call is her wanting her back because somebody, the person moved. A person jumped into his life telling him what she was thinking, which was, you're an idiot for leaving me. We're together. I'm the best person for you. And he reflected that. That person reflected that. It's not the universe, guys. It's people. Okay? He will start thinking your ex, God, I'll miss her. It's not the universe doing it. It's people. Okay? So stop thinking the universe is doing anything for you. It's a really disempowering way to think about this. You've got to think. I think thoughts. It's like telepathy. And then they think the thoughts. The end. You mentioned to go to bed and listen to affirmations. I think I was thinking of doing my own. Yeah, I do, guys. Look, I'll show you. On my voice memos, um, in my phone, I have hundreds of them. It's, I'm almost running out of um, affirmations, see? Affirmation for my body, affirmation for my power, affirmation for the girl I am, affirmations for the new story, okay? I have different ones, and they go for about three or four minutes, and I walk around the park, and I leave a little gap in between each one, and I say it, and I'll be like, I am the queen of my reality. I'm the queen of my reality. Or I know it off by heart now. I just talk to my, over myself. Okay, and it's good to hear it in your own voice because it's you. Views on BAME. What is that? I have no idea what that is. Could you explain? There's a lot of this manifestation shit you guys talk about. I've never heard of it because I don't believe in any of this crap. Do you believe in astrology? Look, I've always believed, oh, I'm a Virgo and I have the traits of being a Virgo. Now, I've never gone down the route of actually knowing my sun, my rising and my all this. I just know my birth date, right? I also know what path number I am. And my path number, 22, is freakily accurate. Like, when I watch some videos on path number 22, I bawl my eyes out because I was like, oh, my God, I understand myself finally. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, okay? I don't know. What Neville got up would say is that someone tells you about yourself and you believe it because it's your assumption. You can read it. You can read anything and believe it. But look, I do think people suit certain um, astrological signs and path numbers. And so I do kind of believe it because I do people think people have similar traits. But that's against everything to do with what Neville teaches. But I personally, you know, like reading that shit. I don't like, I don't like predictive stuff like in the newspaper where it says, Virgo, today you will blah. I'm like, oh, whatever, dude. I'm just talking about personality traits of a certain person. Um, genuine question as I'm from the UK and I want to know an American's view. What is BAME? I'm not sure. Is that Black Lives Matter or something? I don't, I don't know what BAME is. What should I affirm when I want him to come back in two weeks? Um... Darling, just work on your self-concept for two weeks. Don't worry about the timing. Just work on you. Do I believe in guides and angels? Not angels, but look, I, I've seen spirit. So look, you are spirit, guys. You, you come in as spirit and you leave as spirit. And your body goes, but you hang around. You don't go, sorry, you don't leave as spirit. You stay around. So you're here already. You get created. Nothing is created nor destroyed. That's physics. If you buy 
have this water. I can see the water. If I put it in the freezer, it becomes frozen. It changes states, but it's still here. If I boil it and turn it into steam, this disappears, but the steam is still here. You understand? If I take that steam and condense it back down, it goes back to water. I can then freeze it back to frozen. It's always here, the water. It never goes anywhere. If I flush it down the toilet, it goes into the river. Nothing ever goes anywhere. Nothing is created nor destroyed. So how are you created nor destroyed? So there's always spirit. And I've seen people after they've died, and I, this house is haunted, and my last house was haunted. Um, but guides, I don't know. If they're guiding you, I've no idea. Like I know that my brother has gone to a psychic twice, two different psychics, and then his girlfriend's mum went to a psychic, and somebody else that he knows went to a psychic, and every single psychic has told him that his granddad, our granddad, is with him all the time, four different people. So maybe they are there with you, angels guiding you. I don't know. Um, are you Muslim? No, 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 no. I'm nothing. I'm a nothing. I'm not religious. I'm just, I live, believe in me. Um, black Asians minority ethnicity. Oh, black Asians minority ethnicity. I don't know what, why would someone believe in that? Aren't you black and Asian? And that's your ethnicity? I don't understand the question. Um, if so if my manifestation didn't come true, why? Okay, that's a really good question. Have you got rid of the old story? There's an excellent YouTuber called, it's, the channel is called Pluto's Gate. I recommend you guys watch this. His name is Caleb, and he probably explains why manifesting doesn't come true better than anybody. And what he says is, you've got your old story and the new story of what you want to happen. If you're trying to create a new story of you, say it's another person, an ex-boyfriend or whatever, if you're still carrying the old story about you, you can't change the new story. And this is what Neville Goddard calls the old man and the new man. You have to die to the old man to become the new man. That's what resurrection is. That's what rebirth is. That's what Christ is doing in the Bible. He dies, he comes back. That's what they want you to do. They literally want you to die to your old beliefs, die to your old assumptions, Kill them. They're gone. That's why you do affirmations. You're killing them. You're killing them. You're changing them and changing them. You're no longer that person that you were before so that when the person comes back, you've changed. Okay? If you haven't done that, that's why your manifestations aren't coming. If you also don't believe in your power, that's why your manifestations aren't coming because you don't believe you can do this. You will doubt it. And Neville calls doubt the devil. He literally says it in the Bible. That is what the devil is. Doubt. I'm believing, you know, I'm doing these affirmations and you think, oh, but I don't think this is working. Why is this taking so long? You're shitting on your manifestation if you do that. Stop doubting it. Look at everything you've created thus far. Realize how fucking powerful you are. Realize that God is in you. You are God of your, crea your reality and you decide what happens. So, of course, it's going to come true because you fucking said so. That's the attitude you guys have to start having. I know it sounds crazy. I know for the religious people here, it'll sound nuts, like I'm saying God is in you. But if you read the Bible, it literally tells you that. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Test yourself and see. It says, test yourself. Test your powers. The whole way through the book, it says, I am the light. I am the way. It doesn't say he is. It says, I am. When you say I am, who are you talking about? You're talking about yourself. I can wound. I can heal. I can. I am. While I'm doing self-love, should I also affirm what I still want or what I want is done so I need not to worry? Okay, so I would say do 70% self-love, self-concept. I wouldn't call it self-love. It's more the, your concept of yourself, okay, because you can love yourself all you like but still have a concept that relationships don't work for you. Change all those concepts, okay? And still affirm for what you want. So, of course, still affirm for your SP or the new house or whatever it is, but work on you most of all, 70%. Wow, I just saw this on my For You page. Oh, good. G'day. Hi. Oh, someone's in Australia. I'm in Perth. I used to live in Sydney and then London. Now I'm bloody back in freaking Perth. I joined your live just to inform you that you're an amazing person. You deserve the best. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you, Super, um, super MMO Gaming. Hi. Um, I'm not a Christian. No, I'm not either. Look, I'm, I... Oh, another person from Australia. You should YouTube Mary Rodwell. I don't know that person. Never heard of her. What does she do? Hi, you're from Melbourne. Hi, guys. Oh, you're from Australia too, Spunky, Sp Spunky Spooner. Pooper. Spunky Spunky Spooper. 
<laughs> I love your name. I'm in Perth too. Are you? Oh my God. Someone in Perth? That's crazy. Uh, Molly, shush. I am above the level of a light worker. Could you guys explain this light worker stuff? I'm actually, I don't know what this is. I keep seeing it on TikTok and I haven't investigated it enough. I imagine that's healing powers or something. Someone tell me what it is. Do you live near Cronulla? No, no, I'm in Perth. I'm in Dianella. In the fucking arse end of the world. Um, I'm joining your live stream. I'm just seeing any more questions. Hello, we are consciousness having a human experience. Time to wake up the human race. Who said that? You're very wise. We are consciousness having a human experience. That's right. You are gods having a human experience, guys. You are spirit having a human experience. This is just meat. When it dies, you are not dead. I know this because I've seen fucking people outside their own funerals, sitting outside their funerals. Their body, their body is in the casket inside the church and they're out here. Well, what are they doing out there if they're in there? If their body's them, their body isn't you. Your body is not you. You are just a body. You have a body, but you are not your body. You have a body, but you are not your body. I remember being told that in drama school. I never understood what it was. That's what it means. Uh, any more questions? I think you just brought me out of a three-day funk. Woohoo! Oh, great. See, guys, look, honestly, manifestation's not hard when you start realizing how powerful you already are. Please, I'm begging you to start looking at all the things you've already created. And don't just think it's positive stuff. Start looking at the shit you've created. I almost gave myself a car accident a couple of months ago because I wanted a new car. And I thought, oh, if only I got in a car accident, then I could get the money. The next day I almost got killed in a car accident. You're that fucking powerful, guys. Your thoughts create. Start realizing you're creating everything and now create the stuff you do want instead. I'm not so far. I'm near Wanneroo. Ah, you near Wanneroo? I think it's that way. I, I still don't know Perth well enough because I didn't live here for 20 years of my life. And I, when people mention suburbs, I kind of don't know where they are, but I think that's near me. I'm watching from the Philippines. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah, the Asian countries. I forgot you guys are all still awake. Hooray. It's all working in my favor. That is an excellent blanket affirmation. Now, a blanket affirmation. Oh, wow, 16 people here. Hi, guys. So a blanket affirmation is something you will say that just encompasses everything. Everything is working out for me. My life is perfect. Um, everything is working in my favor. It's all working in my favor. Okay, so when something's going to shit, you can say, it's all working in my favor. My life is perfect. It's all working in my favor. Everything is wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? Okay, because you're trying to encompass everything. You don't need the specifics all the time. Sometimes you just want a blanket thing. So when shit's going wrong, have one blanket thing. The other day, I lost all my drafts in my TikTok. I had 94 fucking drafts and they disappeared and I, I fucking freaked for a second. I was like, oh my God, I've just made all these videos. I made all these courses coming up with like 15 videos in a row and they were all gone. And I thought, okay. The only way I can do this is to affirm that they're all right. So I was like, I have all my videos. I have all my drafts. I have all my drafts. Everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. And I was saying it out loud. Everything is always working out for me. While I was trying to download all my photos and everything off my iPad into my computer to leave enough space, turn my iPad off and on again, opened it while I was saying it. I always have all my drafts. Everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. And then the drafts were there. Okay. I did it whilst in a crisis. Blanket affirmations are excellent when you feel stressed. I'm a psychic medium, Reiki master, life coach, and much more. Oh, are you? Brilliant. Come and check my TikTok. What's it called? Indigo Bow. Beautiful. You're a psychic medium. Hooray. I love psychic mediums. Have you guys ever watched Long Island Medium or Hollywood Medium? They're my two favorites. I love them. Um, uh, so Hollywood Medium, that guy, I think, is astoundingly amazing. Like, he told the guy from Family Ties, not Family Ties, what's the show? Growing Pains, that he was going to die. Well, no, he was going to die. He said, your heart, you've got heart failure and you had to go get it checked. And the guy went, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, two weeks later, he was dead because he didn't check it. Um, any other questions? TV shows are there to brainwash you. Stop watching TV. No, I don't watch TV. I just watch those ones. I like E. Um, I like the Kardashians. Don't hate me. You need to research Google David Icke. Iker? Ike? I don't know that person. Um, any more questions, guys? You live in a matrix, people to disconnect you from God and your soul, and your soul is God. Yeah, look, disconnect from the matrix, yeah. I, I can't remember the matrix movie, but people always say disconnect the matrix, and my brother always talks about stop 
taking the red pill or whatever it is. He talks about the Matrix all the time, about people being brainwashed by the news about corona and stuff and whatever that means. The red pill, black pill, blue pill. I, don't, I can't remember that movie. I've got friends in it. can't remember it. Um, the guy who plays God in it was my old drama teacher. The guy with the grey hair. Um, hello. It looks... It first looks... Hello. It first looks from Japan. Hi. Hi. You're from Japan. So, guys, do you have any manifestation questions? I'm running out of questions to answer. Star Wars. Well, the force is with you. They should change that to the force is in you. You are the force. Opinions on twin flames. Look, can someone explain what that's meant to be? Because I don't really understand twin flames. I guess they're saying like soulmates or it's your person. I think everyone can be your fucking person. They're based on your assumptions. If you assume that person's your person, they're your fucking person. You assume that person's your person, they're your person. I've met lots of different people. I decided they were my person, so they were my person. So I think that's a limiting thing to think twin flames and soulmates because you think when you've lost them, oh no, I've lost my one person. What do I do now? Imagine if this information was fed to us as children, the reality we would be living would be great. Mm -hmm. There's an amazing book called Outwitting the Devil and it's written by a guy called Napoleon Hill. Now, Napoleon Hill is very much law of assumption based. He talks about infinite intelligence. He talks about his subconscious all the time and he talked about his dead now he was around in the 50s and he talks about how he was trying to um think of a title for his book think and grow rich and he went to bed he couldn't think of it couldn't think of it and he yelled at his subconscious listen subconscious you give me a million dollar title and you do it now and he was yelling so much that the people who lived below him in his apartment block banged on the ceiling saying shut up because it was middle of the night he went to bed in the middle of the night he woke up at 3 a.m with the title for his book think and grow rich like you want to be rich think you're rich he rang his publisher in the morning at like six in the morning and said, I've got the title. He goes, what is it? And he said, think and grow rich. He goes, okay. And that title, it was like the best selling book of all time about getting rich. Now he talks about, um, a, in a book, it's called Outwitting the Devil. And this book was banned until I think the nineties. And I read it and I was like, I can understand why this book was banned. All it is about is fear and how fear runs the fucking world and how the 1% of the world are running you on fear. You go to school and fear is instilled in you. You go to school and education systems kill your imagination by giving you things you have to learn. You have to know this. No, forget about what you're imagining, your creativeness, your creativity. Learn this, learn this, learn this, learn this so you can become a minion. Okay, that's what this book is about and it is freakily amazing this book outwitting the devil find it on amazon and i think somebody might have read it on an audiobook i don't know but i read it as a physical book and i gave it to so many people i've lost it now but that talks about if you were taught this as a child the world would be a better place and if you were taught not to fear and that fear is the devil your life would be so different reason why i dropped out because school was bs in my opinion yes so look i loved school because I had been at a really crappy school and then I was put in a school where they really embraced drama and the arts and I loved it because of that. And I like learning. I'm really big on researching and learning. So I enjoyed school. But if school doesn't work for you, it makes you feel shitty about yourself. My brother hated school and he's a really intelligent person and he used to have nightmares almost every night about school because he hated it that much. Sometimes it's just not for people. And sometimes they're instilling shit in you that I don't think they should be teaching. They should be teaching you about self-love and self-concept and, and building yourself up and being confident. That's what they should be teaching you. Uh, any more questions, guys? Why are you yelling? Oh, why am I yelling? Sorry, that's the sound of my voice. Um, I affirm every day, affirming leads to manifestation. Yes. So your affirmations are simply replacing your old negative thinking. That's all it is, guys. It's just replacing your negative thoughts. So yes, do it every day because you want to replace those old subconscious dominant thoughts. Should I affirm for a specific person? His goal is to get signed as a professional athlete. And what's that got to do with you? Of course, it doesn't matter what he wants in his life. You can still be with him. Okay, so don't think of that as an obstacle. Don't put any obstacles in front of yourself, guys, about not getting your desire. If you want the person, you can have the person. I don't give a shit if they're famous. Look at Zac Efron's girlfriend. She is a waitress. She was obsessed with him and got him. Look at... Um, Hayley Bieber, she was obsessed with Justin. She got Justin. Now, yes, she's famous, but hey, she beat out Selena, didn't she? Um, reason. Any more questions? 
Are you drinking? Come again. We talked about this. What? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not an addict, but I am drinking coffee. I'm a coffee addict, if that's what you're talking about. I have about three coffees in the morning because I'm keto. I'm on a keto diet and I don't eat until lunchtime. Um, any more questions, guys? Otherwise, I'll log off and I'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. EST, New York time. So whatever that is for you guys, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So whatever the New York time is, 6 p.m. So I think that's 3 p.m. LA time. Uh, it's 7 a.m. Monday morning in Perth, probably 9 a.m. Sydney time. I think I got skipped. Oh, what's your question, darling? I had a question. What was it? Write it again. Danielle, write your question again, darling, so I can see it. Uh, about education and the importance of knowledge. Question. What, what is your question about education and the importance of knowledge? Yes, knowledge is important, but your imagination is more important, as Einstein said. Um, any more questions? How do I know if... Oh, there it is. How do I know if someone's doing black magic on me or if my manifestations are blocked? Guys... People can only do black magic on you if you believe they are. People can only put a spell on you or a curse on you if you believe in it. So stop believing that they're putting black magic on you. That's your belief. That's your assumption and therefore it will manifest. So stop believing that shit. Well, if my manifestations are blocked, your manifestations aren't blocked. That's your belief. Stop saying that. Guys, do you realize as you say things, as you're writing it down, that's an affirmation. You're affirming, I am blocked. You're affirming, I have a curse on me. People are doing black magic on me. That's your affirmation. Your thoughts, your dominant thoughts are affirmations. It says in the Bible, decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. Meaning, as you decree it, as you affirm it, it'll be established. Stop establishing it with your words. Your words are your wand. Your words are powerful. Stop saying you're blocked. Stop saying someone's putting a curse on you. That's what's causing your manifestations not to come because you think that shit. Stop thinking it. I found weird bruises on me and I could feel dark energy in my house. So go and get some sage. Sage out that shit if you believe in that. And then tomorrow morning go, bing, it's all gone. It's your beliefs. Okay? I've tried not to acknowledge it, but it's there. Well, you're acknowledging that it's there, so stop doing it. You're believing it. I could believe there's no ghost in my house, but I smell perfume every day in my bedroom and every night being sprayed. I just accept it. She's a nice, friendly person in there. But if I thought she was a bad spirit, I'd tell her to go away. I just I decide she wasn't there. I just decide with my thoughts that it wasn't there. Any more questions? Well, I don't know where you are from, but here in Australia, it's a very strong movement about alternative classes. Guys, ethnicities and we're all the same we're all look i'm this color but i could have been born black or asian or whatever we're all the same underneath we're all spirit we're all the fucking same we're all one why are you worried about what ethnicity you are or what ethnicity other people are it doesn't matter it doesn't determine their worth or anything don't worry about ethnicity that's why the black lives matter movement is i think almost slightly concerning because it's saying black lives matter. Well, of course they fucking matter. I can't even believe that's a sentence. What do you mean they matter? Of course they matter. They matter as much as any other life. What in the hell are you talking about? To me, that's scary that we have to say that to believe they matter. It's, of course they do. Anyway, we're getting off the subject, but you see what I'm saying? You sound pretty privileged. Do I? Why do I sound privileged? Um, thank you for that point of view. I appreciate it. That's all right. Just, just don't worry about spirits or, um, things that are dark or any, or, or spells. You can just decide that they're not affecting you. Okay. Just decide that's all your mind. You should try living a day in a black man's life. No, no, no. Guys, don't get me wrong. I have white privilege because I'm white. I'm saying that. I know I do. What I'm saying is lots of famous black people have been talking about this that the perpetuation of saying we've got to get up to here okay we've got to think that everyone's equal 
already. And I know that's stupid as a white person saying this stuff, but all I'm trying to say is I would like everyone to think everyone's equal, that we don't have to say black lives matter. Of course they matter. It's ridiculous to think that we had to say that, that the world has got to a point where we have to say these things. What? Of course they do. What the fuck? Um, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm not privileged. I know I'm privileged because I'm white and because of the country I live in. Yes, I know that's what black people have been trying to do for years and years. And I think the movement's great. I'm just saying I want to go past that movement and be like, everyone's equal. And I look, I, I, as a person, I should have no opinion because I'm white. So clearly I'll just shut up. That's the point. Nothing has changed. Yes, look, I agree. It's like the, um, well, it's not the same, but, you know, like the um, sexual equality movement and stuff with, with people being abused. Like you've got to get it out there to get that to change. The Me too, okay? Um, but what I'm saying is, is that I, I, I would love for, oh, anyway, it's hard. I mean, it'd be lovely if no one saw anyone's skin colour, wouldn't it? <laughs> That'd be great. That's what protests are about. Yes, I know, I know, I know. That's what the protests are about. Look, I've been to them. I, I understand it. I'm just saying, well, not the last couple of years when I was older, oh, when I was younger. But um, have you heard there's white supremacist groups in Australia now? Oh, I'm sure there are. The racism here is rife. Australia is a very racist country. In fact, I think it's more racist than any country I've ever been to because there's not enough black people here and they're not, they don't experience enough ethnicities to understand that everyone's equal. It's crazy racist here. I think that's great that you want that. With BLM, we can help achieve that. Yes, yeah, exactly. And look, like, um, it's what everyone tried in the 60s and 70s, didn't they? And, you know, with the Black Panthers and everything and it didn't, it didn't eventuate because the, the, the dominant thinking in the world was too strong and now the dominant thinking is changing and I think it's wonderful. Like, look at Britney Spears recently. This is just an example. Think about the way Britney, Britney Spears was treated in the 2000s and that's when I was growing up. And that documentary has just come out about her and so many people are coming out and saying, if that was now, no um, young star in their 20s would ever be questioned about her sexuality the way she was um, abused about his mental health the way she was because mental health has become such a prominent issue in people's minds and the youth of today are so cling are like thingy about it and understand that they their words affect people that bullying affects people and can and can cause suicide and all kinds of depression and anxiety etc that they'd be very careful with the way that they interviewed her now and the way she was treated was so shit and now she's in a situation as an adult where the way the media treated her has turned her into the adult that she is and how unfair it is. So um, what I'm saying is, is that everyone's thinking now is expanding. People are getting more woke, and I hate that expression, but they are. They're waking up to the fact that everyone's equal. They're waking up to the fact that mental health is important and they can't bully people now. And it's wonderful. I mean, it wasn't happening in my day. In my day, there was no Facebook. There was no social media, and bullying just happened insidiously behind the scenes, you know, and, and now it's obvious that people are being bullied in in the media, you know, and they're still doing it, they lose their jobs. Good. Yes, Britney's story is horrible. Yeah, look, that's really you like think about those images of Britney when when she was going through a mental health spiral and she shaved her hair and everything. They did that now to like Selena Gomez or something. Okay, say when Selena is that with Justin, she had a you know kidney transplant. Can you imagine them doing that? People will be like, the fuck are you doing? Like it wouldn't happen now. It just wouldn't. And um, anytime it does happen, it's really, really stamped down on it because everyone's got an opinion now. Everyone's got a platform. You understand? Like before, when I was growing up, it was just the media had the platforms, the newspapers, there was no internet and no one had the power to have their own opinions out there. Now everyone can have an opinion and therefore there's some really fucked up opinions going on, but there's a lot more, I think. I'd like to be positive about it, positive opinions and positive talk going on about the world, the way the world should be right? Because she's a woman, she was so straight away tagged as crazy and no one listened to her. Yeah. Yeah. Any more ma manifestation questions, guys? Otherwise I'll go. Um, cause it's the morning here and I need to get out of my pajamas. Um, any more questions? So guys, please do. Um, how do we get rid of COVID? Someone asked me this in a manifestation group and we had a big discussion about it and they said, how was it created? They asked me, because I always answer questions people ask me. 
the way I think that COVID was created and the way we can get rid of it is the same thing. And I could be totally wrong about this. This is my, my, just my thinking. Before COVID, there was a lot of talk about it would only take for one big um, pandemic to happen for the world to change. And there's a lot of interviews with different people, um, medical people, government agencies, different lectures you can find online with lots of people talking about Bill Gates, lots of people, lots of people. Obama's administration set up an anti, um, a pandemic kind of task force because they were waiting for it. They were anticipating it. Now, their assumption was collectively that this will happen eventually. So guess what happened? It happened eventually. That's how assumption works. So they'd seen SARS, they'd seen all these other diseases and they thought one of these will really hit and that'll be it. Guess what happened? Okay, so the way we get rid of it is to take our attention away from it. Okay, because we're all watching the news and the more we're watching the news, the more we're giving this attention, then we're growing the fear about it, then people are wearing masks and all this shit. Okay, and I'm not saying don't wear a mask, I'm just saying the fear isn't helping anybody. I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news for five years and the only reason I flipped it on the other day was because there were bushfires in Australia and, uh, near me and I wanted to know what was going on. Because I want my house to burn down. Um, but the fear is is making it worse. It's like the anti-drug movement and the anti, anti-anything anti doesn't help. <laughs> You're just talking about it more and creating more. You should be like, anyway, we could get, go down a rabbit hole of this, but I don't know how... COVID could go away, but I do know how I think I thought it was created, which was the consciousness talking about a disease is coming, a disease will come, a disease will come, a disease is coming. And then it came. Do you believe in God? I believe I'm God. Do you share success stories with an SP, feel comfortable with it? Not really. I've, I've talked about my SP a little bit on here, but I don't really want to get too much into some of my personal stuff, guys, because... Too personal. I manifested not to go to school to see if it would work when we had two week break because of COVID. Yes, do that stuff. You don't want to go to school. Imagine that there's you know snow day or COVID day or whatever. Then you don't have to go to school. All right, guys. I'm going to log off um, because it's very early here and I still haven't had a shower, as you can see. And um, please do follow my page because if you follow me, you'll know when I'm going live and I'm going to go random most days live on not particular times, just to catch different time zones. But I definitely am going live this Sunday, 6 p.m. EST, this Thursday, 9 p.m. EST. They're my definite times, and I'll go live other times. I also have a Manifest Your X Back series, video series coming out. It's about 15-part series. I have a Manifest a Text series going at the moment. It's got two more videos to go. I have Manifest an Apology series coming up, okay, if you want an apology from someone. Um, I have lots of um, stuff coming up, guys. So please do follow me because then you'll see the videos actually popping up because I do them in parts because I talk so much. I can't get everything in one 60-second video. It's too difficult. So I do do things in parts. So do follow me. All right, guys. It was so, so lovely to talk to you. I will go live again tomorrow. It is going to be 6 p.m. EST. That is my definite live time tomorrow. So do catch me then. And then I'll also try go live um, the next day and the next day on random times. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Follow me, my page. Bye. Bye.